This video is made possible thanks to TechBargains.com, where you can find great tech products for low prices, so go check them out. Okay, so today we're going to be reviewing the Logitech G710 Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. I already made a first impressions video where I basically unboxed the keyboard and went over the things that I liked and didn't like about it. So let's go ahead and recap really quick on what features this keyboard has and then we'll go ahead and go into my opinion on this keyboard after having used it for quite a while now, I'm going to say at least a month of usage. This keyboard is $150, so why in the world would anybody pay $150 US dollars retail for a keyboard? Well the big reason is that it is a mechanical keyboard, which means that there is a switch under each key which gives you an efficient typing experience, it gives you a really nice typing feedback experience where you type it, you feel the key being pressed, and it just, I know it sounds weird, but as a power user, someone who loves typing, it feels good when I type on this keyboard. It just feels like, wow, I'm getting work done. It's kind of, it's interesting. Okay, let me try to explain this here. The standard keyboard is a membrane keyboard, where basically if you've ever opened up an electronic device, basically you have a plastic or a rubber looking piece, right? Under your keys, let's say you open up your keyboard. Under your keys, there's a rubber piece. And when you press the key, it's like a pad that presses down on the circuit board. Well, that's the standard keyboard. The downside of having that kind of keyboard is that when you press down the key, you don't, you can't feel whether you're actually pressing the circuit board or not. So the key doesn't always press, causing problems, which means that characters don't come out on the screen, and problems arise, right? Most people have trouble typing on a membrane keyboard. Well, with a mechanical keyboard, you press the key down just a bit. Once you feel the key go down, you know that the button is pressed and everything is good. And along with that comes a really nice experience while typing. And it actually feels like a nice typewriter feeling, which is really satisfying to say. To wrap up the comparison, on a standard membrane keyboard, it's basically a rubber piece that you press down on that touches a circuit board, whereas a mechanical keyboard, there's a switch under each key, which as soon as you press it, basically, you know the key's being pressed. So that's why this keyboard is so much more expensive. It's because there's a lot more moving parts inside of it. Now, it's not cheap to make compared to a membrane keyboard, so the price goes up. Not only this, it's LED backlit, four levels of brightness, and it's a mechanical keyboard. I mean, seriously, guys, you can't expect this keyboard to be cheap. So features, mechanical keys, the LED, it's LED backlit, you have a USB slot on the back of it, you have the programmable G keys, up to six of them, but each key can be programmed up to three different functions, so that's pretty cool. You have the media controls, which actually comes kind of standard with most uh, keyboards these days if you buy any keyboard like online or something. And you get the detachable palm rest, which is really great. So let me just break down each of these features and my experience with them and what I think about them. The mechanical keys, wow, it's such a game changer, seriously. If you've never used a mechanical keyboard, I had never actually used one. Uh, maybe like in grade school with the old, old keys. All my recent keyboards have been the standard membrane keyboards. And seriously, it's such a game changer. I don't know if I'd like to go back to a standard keyboard. I mean, you just get such a nice feeling. I mean, seriously, mechanical keyboards are the way to go. If you've never tried one, pick one up and give it a try because you're going to love it if you're a power user. The LEDs. I've never had an LED backlit keyboard and seriously this thing just delivers. I love how I'm like editing videos at night or I'm gaming at night or whatever. I can just turn on the LEDs on the lowest brightness. It's not distracting or anything and I know exactly where the keys are. The USB slot on the back. I, I honestly didn't use it. My computer tower is right next to me. Like seriously not even a foot away from me. So. I didn't have any reason to use it, but hey, it's a great feature to have there, especially if your tower's kind of far from you. Now, one thing that I have to note, though, is that the cable that comes from the keyboard is really thick, and it requires two USB slots if you want to use the USB slot on the back of the keyboard. Now, you don't have to plug in the second USB plug into your computer if you don't want to use the slot on the back of your keyboard. The media controls are, well, pretty standard. I mean, you have your pause, play, stop. Uh, go back, go forward. You have what I love the most with the media controls was the volume slider on the keyboard. I'm I actually changed the volume on my on my computer quite a bit, and having that rolling bar on my keyboard was seriously just a big help. So I really like that feature. And the detachable palm rest. In my initial impressions video, I gave it high praise, and I still do. The palm rest adds to the aesthetic of this keyboard, it just makes it look really nice, makes it look like it grabs the surface just a lot better. It 
makes the keyboard really comfortable. And to be honest, without the palm rest on, the keyboard really looks goofy to me. It looks funny. It doesn't look complete. So now the Logitech gaming software is running on my computer. And the first thing you notice is that the M keys now glow orange. They turn on when the software is running to say, hey, these buttons are now in use and they're working. So what can we do with these? These are quick macro keys. So we have G1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you can't see 6, but 6 is right below 5. G1, let's go ahead, press M1, okay, I have a text document up here, just to give you an idea of how this works. So I'm going to press M1, we're going to change this G1 key, I'm going to press memory record, okay, and now it's solid, so it's like, what key do you want me to record on? I'm going to press G1, now it's blinking, and it's basically asking me, what do you want me to record when you press the G1 key? So I'm just going to do something really easy, I'm going to do 1, 2, okay, and now I'm going to press memory record. So now when I press the G1 key, if I space down and press G1, there we go. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. And if I go to, let's say, memory 2, just to give an example, I'm also going to change G1. Memory record, G1, and this is going to be QWERTY. Stop memory record. You go down a bit. G1 is QWERTY. Press memory 1, G1 is 12. Memory 2, G1 is QWERTY. So you can see how easy it is to toggle between your quick macro functions just like that and you can do this to all the keys so again right off the bat these six keys on the side are highly customizable and you can have up to 18 quick macro keys set up okay so let's dive in a little deeper what can the software do why does the software have to be running well the software gets really cool you get a whole different experience because you can set up profiles and let's go over that right now so if i click either g1 or, or the memory keys i, I bring it to this screen and you can see that we can set up profiles, okay? And the same thing as setting up the uh, super quick macro functions, we can also do it here if you wanted. Okay, so macro one and two, you can see on the keyboard, they're lighting up as I click these. It's the same exact thing. But let's say macro uh, one, G2 key, instead of doing it on my keyboard, I can do it all through the software. I can click this arrow down, go to edit, but check it out. Now we have a ton more options. We can do a single keystroke. So I can do like a uh, control, uh, control H or something, whatever you want to do. Uh, we can do multi keys. So it'll actually, let's say if I press A, it's going to record what I'm pressing just like that. So that's really cool for some, some certain games if you need to have multi keys being pressed down. We have text blocks, so you can write out a whole paragraph if you want and have every time you press the key, that text block comes out. We can have our keys act as a mouse function can do media controls if the ones on the keyboard aren't already good enough for you. Hot keys, which is pretty cool. Do you like close window, maximize window, cut, copy, paste, undo, redo, cool stuff like that. Shortcuts, which is really cool. You press, you press one of these keys and you can have it open up a program, which is great. Function keys, which is, you know, pretty basic stuff, calculator. And Ventrilo, if you use Ventrilo. Basically what you can do is set up a bunch of different profiles. So what this means is every time, let's say, uh, an executable is opened up then the keyboard will revert to the settings that you've set for that program for example I open up Photoshop I have a new layer button so if I let me go ahead and open up Photoshop for you okay here it's on the default profile Photoshop's not turned on I'm gonna open up Photoshop alright there we go it's open if I press file new just open up a new uh, thing here okay if I press the G1 key it's gonna make a new layer because I set it to make a new layer. Let me go to the software. You'll see if I go to Photoshop, new layer, I named it new layer, edit. I set it to be a keystroke control J, which is the new layer shortcut key. Okay, so that's really cool. You can set up different macros for each game or a different program that you set up. So if you are heavy into audio editing, graphic editing, and video editing, you can have three different profiles for Adobe Audition, what I say, Adobe Audition, Adobe Photoshop, and Adobe Premiere, and have each of these G keys do something different in each program right off the bat without you having to go and program them manually. That is the Logitech gaming software, and that's what it does for your new keyboard. It's pretty sweet. So there's one reason why I don't run this software when using the keyboard. The reason is, for some reason, when I plug in my Mamba mouse, my Razer Mamba mouse, the keyboard freezes up. It doesn't work. Nothing works and I have to restart my computer. Let me show you what I mean. I'm using the Razer Crate Mouse for the example of this tutorial, which is pretty cool. Remember guys, quick tip, always have a backup 
wired mouse, even if you have a wireless one. And this wireless one actually functions as a wired one too, but always have a wired mouse. Let me unplug this Razer Crate mouse and keep an eye on the keyboard LEDs when I plug in this, this mouse. This is the Razer Mamba. Soon the keyboard starts blinking. Or actually, it just turned, yeah, there we go. It's like blinking and it doesn't work. The mouse doesn't work doesn't work nothing I'm trying to move my mouse nothing's moving I'm trying to type Windows key nothing works so that is the reason why I don't use the keyboard software for some reason I don't know what it is I have the updated drivers and everything I've looked up the Razer crate drivers everything's up to date it's just not working for me so and I paid good money for this mouse so I'm gonna prefer this mouse over some software for a keyboard I'm hoping I can find a fix soon if you guys know of any fixes let me know but this is just a problem that I ran into so it's really unfortunate but um, yes so my final thoughts on this keyboard I absolutely love it it's definitely a keyboard I'm gonna hold on to I would recommend it to power users and power users who are looking for a solid keyboard experience it has a lot to offer and it definitely lives up to its price tag it is sad that I can't use the keyboard software when using my Razer Mamba because they're both really good products but I think I'm gonna have to let the software go on this one and just deal with the keyboard raw with the mouse itself so to end it you will not be let down by the design, the build quality, the performance, and the countless features it packs in. Thanks guys for watching this video. Remember to thumb up, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys watching this video.